I just wanted to, to share a few little things with you today. Um, most of you know my dad, Pastor Carter, as just your pastor. Um, and the context which you see him usually is every week up here preaching um, and delivering sermons. And a lot of you feel like, I've heard so many people say, I feel like he's a father to this church. And so I just wanted to share with you this story that Caesar told you. I could have so many stories to tell you like that about my dad. But um, for time's sake, I just wanted, I made a little list here of uh, some quirky things about him that you may not know. <laughs> <laughs> to just um, give you a glimpse of Pastor Carter as not a pastor, but as a dad. <laughs> um, the first thing is that uh, dad does not rent movies. In fact, he rarely ever watches them. Um, but every once in a great while, in an attempt to bond with his children, um, all who are over 25, <laughs> uh, dad will be in line at some sort of convenience or department store and uh, come across the family classic section and the, those clearance bins by the checkout. <laughs> and he'll come home with all these wholesome movies that he, he bought for $4.99 or less. <laughs> and he'll be really excited and want us to, meet, to watch them. So to this day, we have stacks of unopened movies in our basement <laughs> uh, with titles like Fluffy's Journey Home, the 12 Dogs of Christmas. <laughs> uh, also, uh, Dad is a firm believer that Windex is the answer to all of your cleaning needs. He purchases Windex in the gallon size economy jugs, so he'll never run out. And if you come over to our house, you might just find him following you around the kitchen, spraying behind you as you go. <laughs> uh, Dad had never quite caught on to the technology age. Um, he has this cell phone that's clipped onto his belt that falls off and breaks into six different pieces at least twice a day. But he refuses to get a new one. So, uh, all of his kids, me and my two brothers, we like to buy him lots of techie gifts for Christmas every year so we can steal them from him later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in high school, dad made my prom date come over two hours early so he could take him for a walk up the driveway to chat. <laughs> so uh, my poor date was so nervous after that he wouldn't even hold my arm to walk up the stairs. Uh, Dad absolutely loves family traditions, and one of his favorite things to do is collect Christmas ornaments from all over the world or from special occasions in our lives, or from ornaments that people have given to him or things that have meaning. Um, so every year at Christmas time, the family will gather around and we'll sit around the tree and Dad will take out the box and carefully unwrap each ornament one by one and then completely forget where he got them from. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, if you are involved in anything in school, whether it be a school play or sports, you always knew where dad was. You could look up at any point and just look for the loudest guy in the stands, cheering his heart out with that huge smile, kind of like that one over there. And he loved to yell things like, did you see that? <laughs> That's my kid out there. <laughs> Just in case you missed it. Uh, he was always so proud of us no matter what we did. Um, when we were little, uh, dad quit his job as a police officer to go full time into ministry. Uh, not having a steady source of income made it very financially difficult for my parents, but we never knew it. Mom and dad, would never buy themselves anything for a long time so we could have the little extras in life. Um, I didn't know this until many years later, but dad used to wear the same rowdy suit over and over to preach every Sunday um, so that we could afford to do things like play sports or have a pet. Um, when I lived at home, I used to sneak outside dad's bedroom door and I would always hear him pray for me and my two brothers. 
He prayed for us every single day. And during my teenage years, when I wasn't sure how I felt about religion anymore, um, I used to sit outside and listen to him pray for me for hours. And it was one of the things that brought me back to God. So. Um, for those of you who may not know, I am married to uh, a guy named Ben, who's going to come out here right now. <laughs> This is Ben. <laughs> and uh, Ben is about to become a dad in two months. So we have a little one coming. And um, uh, when I fell in love with Ben and when I knew I wanted to marry him, one of the things that attracted him to me so much was the fact that he had so many characteristics that were similar to my dad. Um, I wanted our future children to be loved by my husband the same way that I was loved by my dad. Um, so I know that he's this little boy that's going to be born in two months. I know he's going to be uh, one of the luckiest kids around, not only to have one of the greatest uh, granddads in the world, but also the greatest dad. So. Um, so I asked him to come out here today uh, to play guitar. Um, because I wanted to sing, do something a little special for Father's Day. And I remembered that the first time I ever sang in church, or sang in public for that matter, was in church when I was four years old. And uh, I told Dad that I wanted to sing Rock of Ages. It was my favorite hymn. And so I got up on stage in front of the church. Um, and when I got up on stage, I panicked. And I got really nervous, and I couldn't sing anymore. So Dad had to come up and uh, sing with me so that I could get through it. So um, it's been over 20 years, but I thought maybe I'd put Dad on the spot and see if he would come sing Rock of Ages with me. Self in thee. 